So the purpose of this video is to explain how we use an electronic collar and why we might use it. Uh, let's say we're reinforcing a bed stay. If I want my dog to get on the bed and stay on the bed, um, I've got uh, I've got food, I can show my dog, uh, hey, if you stay on the bed, I'll continue to give you food. Um, I can use a leash. If my dog gets off the bed, I can pull the leash and pull the leash back onto the bed. Now the dog's back on the bed. <clears throat> if I want to get to a place where I don't have to have the leash on the dog and I don't have to be providing reinforcement with food, um, a great benefit, uh, something that's really beneficial, can be the electronic collar. So the analogy that I usually give is similar to driving down the road with your seatbelt on. If you take your seatbelt off before you stop or uh, you know like just while you're driving, you're going to hear an auditory stimulus. Ding, 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 ding. As soon as you put the seatbelt on, click, it stops. That is classic negative reinforcement. So we're going to talk about the same thing with the dog bed. So dog's on the bed. The dog gets off the bed without being asked to get off the bed at a time that wasn't appropriate for them to get off the bed. They get off, ding, 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 click. Seatbelt goes back on, dog gets back on the bed. They're absolved of that pressure, okay? So the cessation of that pressure is the, that's what negative reinforcement is. Um, the dinging in this case is gonna be an electronic collar correction. So the dog gets off the bed, no, ding, 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 tap, tap, tap. Dog gets back on the bed. Good, good job, awesome. Now, a couple of things about that analogy. In that situation, you have to know that nobody is like karate chopping you in the neck or stabbing you or like hitting you with a hammer to get you to put your seatbelt on. It doesn't have to be that uh, drastic of a correction. Uh, it's more annoying. So if basically the goal is to be annoying enough for a long enough period of time that you desire to put your seatbelt back on or the dog desires to do the thing that you ask them to do and on a long enough timeline with enough practice and repetition, the pattern becomes not to do that thing in the first place, not to fail, not to get off the bed when you weren't asked to. So the uh, in, in, inversely, if you're asking the dog to go to the bed instead of just stay on the bed, and your dog chose not to go on the bed, you said, on your bed, and the dog doesn't go towards the bed, ding, 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 as soon as they start going towards the bed, the ding stops, the pressure stops, they get on the bed, good, now you absolved yourself, absolved yourself of punishment by doing the right thing. Good job. Now, the same thing can be true for a recall, so calling your dog to come. So if, um, if I am standing here and my dog is running around and I say, Fido, and Fido doesn't turn around. In fact, he's still facing the opposite direction. He's rummaging around, he's um, you know, eating dirt, doing all sorts of fun dog things. Um, I can, again, start that reinforcement. Tap, 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 tap. That's the same thing. Ding, ding, ding. As soon as the dog turns around, the dog's head turns back to face me, pressure is absolved. Good job, buddy, good boy. Dog comes all the way back in. I can get a front sit or I can just reward my dog right for coming. So I start to be able to shape my dog's behavior in a way that's similar to, say, the hot and cold game. So. Uh, if I'm calling my dog into me, my dog is out here, they're pointed out, this is the dog's head, pointed out, they're incorrect, they're cold. Cold, 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 cold. They turn, they face back towards me. As soon as they're facing back towards me and coming towards me, good job, they're hot, warm, good boy, good pup. So the same thing is true, again, of the dog bed. So this is the only place that can be hot if the dog is, has been told on your bed. So if I say on your bed and the dog does not go towards the bed, they're now cold, right? So it can be cold, 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 hot. Good job. So they can absolve themselves of pressure by committing, the, or by committing to the behavior um, that you're asking them for. Uh, and this is a really clear way for us to teach the dog, as well as a really easy way for us to 
hand over the reins to the client. So if I teach a dog how to respond to the electronic collar and how to um, behave accordingly, and all I have to teach you how to do is to handle the collar and how to reward the dog appropriately, then that can make a really smooth transition. I've spent you know, uh, 16 years with a leash in my hand, um, you know, 10 hours a day, a lot of days, 12 hours a day, some days. It's very difficult for me to teach leash skills to a person that doesn't do it that much. I do it, I do it all the time, but they don't get the fine-tuned, uh, the tiny, tiny little pieces. And some stuff can be a lot easier if we do the electronic collar. So when we get a dog in for training here, um, if it is an off-leash dog, I know that we're gonna be able to, to give the client back the dog that um, is gonna recall to them without a leash on. Uh, if I'm doing it um, without an electronic collar, there's a lot of other things in play there. So if we do it without an electronic collar, the chances are much greater that the dog doesn't get a full off-leash, um, that I don't trust them fully off-leash in various distracting environments. environments. Uh, I know that in a short period of time, and three weeks, four weeks, six weeks, it might seem like a really long time to be away from your dog, but it's a short period of time to train your dog. You take a dog like him, where I trained him every day for two years to get him to the point where I wanted him and we were competing and things like that. So the things that we expect from a dog in three weeks, if we want them off leash, the easiest way to do it, the um, most convenient way to do it, and uh, the best way for clients that I've found is to use the electronic collar, uh, and we do that for most of our clients.